Hello everyone, my name is Will Valida and in this video we're going to be talking about Azure Container Apps. So Azure Container Apps is a serverless container platform that enables us to run microservices and containerized applications. We can execute our application code in any container and Container Apps provides us with the ability to develop our applications without enforcing a particular runtime or a programming model on us. It's built on top of Azure Kubernetes Service, CADA and Envoy and integrates nicely with Dapper. Container Apps gives us the benefit of running containers in Azure without having to manage cloud infrastructure and complex container orchestrations. We can use Container Apps for a variety of different use cases, and the most common use cases are deploying public API endpoints, running applications that perform background processing, applications that handle event-driven processing, and running microservices with the option to integrate with the Dapper framework. Apps in Azure Container Apps can scale based on the following characteristics. HTTP uh, traffic, the number of events coming into um, our Container Apps, CPU or memory load, or any CADA supported scaler. Let's dive into the specifics of Azure Container Apps, starting with environments. Now, individual Container Apps are deployed to a single Container Apps environment, which acts as a secure boundary around a group of Container Apps. If you're coming from a Kubernetes background, container app environments are conceptually similar to namespaces. Container apps deployed in the same environment are essentially deployed in the same virtual network. They also write logs to the same log analytics workspace. If you have an existing virtual network, you can actually use that same virtual network to deploy your Azure Container Apps environment to. Now, Container Apps manages the details of Kubernetes and container orchestration for us. Containers in Container Apps can use any runtime, programming language, or development stack of our choice. Container Apps supports Linux container images, and we can use container images from any public or private container registry, such as Azure Container Registry. We can defi even define multiple containers within the same container app, and this is known as a pod. The containers in a pod will share the same hard disk and network resources, and they experience the same application lifecycle. And this is very handy in a variety of situations, such as running a sidecar container in our application, or for when we want to share scaling rules amongst our containers. Now, the application lifecycle of container apps is tied to the concept of revisions. A revision is essentially an immutable snapshot for your container app. When we create our container app, the first revision is automatically created for us. And then new revisions are created whenever we change the container app's template configuration. Revisions are really great for when we enable ingress on our container app to be accessible via HTTP. This is good for situations when we want to redirect traffic between revisions to say perform A-B testing or to support blue-green deployment scenarios. Now, new revisions will remain active until we deactivate them, which we can do automatically or manually. And up to 100 revisions will remain available to our container app until we purge them. Now, it's important to note that not all changes to our container app will create a new revision. Changes to container apps will either be a revision scope change or an application scope change. And let's break down what this actually means. So a revision scope change will create a new revision, which will include changes to our containers, adding or updating scaling rules, changes to our Dapper settings, if we're using the Dapper framework for our microservices, or any change to the template section of the configuration, which I'll show you in a bit. Application scope changes will not create a new revision, and these include changes to traffic splitting rules, turning ingress on and off, uh, changes to secret values, and if our applications are using any secrets, if we change those, those won't create a new revision, and any changes that we make outside our template configuration. Now, one thing to note here is when we make changes to secrets, even though this is an application scope change, all of our revisions must be restarted before a container or before our container will recognize the new secret values. Now, the application lifecycle, like I said, uh, for Azure Container Apps revolves around revisions. When we deploy our container app, our first revision is automatically created for us. And as we update our container app with a, re with a revision scope change, a new revision will be created. We'll then have the choice to either um, automatically deactivate the old revision or allow it to remain available. 
And once we no longer need a revision, if we, we can deactivate that revision um, with the option to reactivate it uh, later if we need to. Uh, but when we deactivate a revision, essentially the container that's being used in that revision will shut down. Cool, now let's take a high level overview of networking in Azure Container Apps. Now, as I mentioned earlier, container apps run in the context of an environment, which is supported by a virtual network. When we create an environment, we can either provide a custom VNet that we own, or a VNet will be automatically created for us. Now, the one that's automatically created for us will be inaccessible to us because they'll be created in Microsoft's tenant. Uh, whereas our own, where we can access our own custom VNet since it belongs to our tenant. We can create environments with different accessibility levels. So we can create external environments which can accept public requests they're deployed with a virtual IP on an external public facing IP address. And we can also create internal environments which have no public endpoint. These are deployed with a virtual IP mapped to an internal IP address. The internal endpoint is an Azure internal load balancer and IP addresses are issued from the custom VNet's list of private IP addresses. Now, Container Apps also provides us with built-in observability that provides us with a view of the health of our, um, of our container app. This is great for helping us monitor and diagnose the state of our app to improve performance and to respond to any problems. And there are a number of features that we can use when it comes to monitoring our container apps. When we develop our container app, we can use log streaming using either the Azure portal or the Azure CLI to view a stream of our container standard out and standard error log messages in real time. We can also connect to our containers console when we want to troubleshoot or modify anything inside our container. We can also use Azure Monitor to collect metric data from our container app, and we can collect application logs and store them in log analytics workspaces. Logs from all of our container apps in our environment will be sent to the same logs analytics workspace, which provides us with a one, one single place to store application log data from all our containers running in our container app environment. And then finally, we can use alerts in Azure Mod Monitor to notify ourselves on issues in, that are happening inside our container app based on any metric and log data. Some other features of the container apps include it provides really great integration with the Dapper framework. So if you're using Dapper to build your microservices, um, Azure Container Apps is a great way to actually host those applications in Azure. There's also support for built-in authentication and authorization with providers such as Azure AD, uh, Facebook, GitHub, Google, Twitter, or any custom OpenID connector. There's support for managed identities. Uh, we can also publish revisions using GitHub Actions and manage our revisions using the Azure CLI. And we can also use health, liveness, start, startup, and readiness probes, similar to how we'd use them in Kubernetes. And we can set these up using either TCP or HTTPS. Cool, so let's go into a demo. Here, I'm gonna show you how we can provision a container app using Bicep before going into the Azure pool and then afterwards, Sorry, going into the Azure portal and taking a tour of our um, Azure Container app. So here I am in Visual Studio Code. So let's go uh, through this step by step. So here I've got my Log Analytics workspace. Remember our Container Apps environment will have all of our containers provisioned to the same environment and they'll send logs to this Log Analytics workspace. Then coming down here, remember we can pull um, images from either public or private container registries. So here I've got a container registry that's a private one, it's an Azure Container Registry. And the one thing to note here in the properties is I've enabled the um, admin user. Now, usually we wouldn't use this. Uh, we do, uh, we'd actually enable, um, i just go a managed identity. So I'd write something like a system assigned identity for this container registry and authenticate that way. This is currently not supported by Azure Container Apps. Um, managed identities are supported, but not at the container app environment level, um, just at the, the application itself. Um, so we'll have to use an admin user to, in order to authenticate to a private container registry. And then we come down to the interesting part. So we've got our container app environment here defined in Microsoft.app. Dot, um, uh, forward slash managed environments. 
And here we give our uh, content app environment a name, provision it in the location, and then in the properties, we can define two things. We can define where we're gonna send our logs to. So here I'm going to be sending my logs to my log analytics workspace uh, using the customer ID uh, of my log analytics workspace that I defined earlier and using the primary shared key from that same log analytics workspace. Um, we can also here um, within our container app environment define the VNet that we're going to be using. Um, in a future video, we'll actually walk through setting up a container app environment in our own custom VNet. But for now, I'm just going to leave this one out. And when we provision our container app environment, uh, a VNet will be created for us within Microsoft's tenant. And then we come to our container app itself. So here I'm giving a uh, my container app a name, provisioning it in the same location, giving it a system um, assigned managed identity, and then we come into our properties. <coughs> so in our properties, um, for our managed environment ID, I'm passing in the ID of our container app environment. Um, so I've defined my container app environment, and here I'm saying deploy this container app to that container app environment. Then I've got, um, then I'm going to set up my, the configuration for this container app. So this line here, active revision modes, can either be multiple or single. So by enabling multiple, we can actually have multiple revisions in our container app um, running at, at the same time, um, or single, which means we can only have one revision running at the same time. And I've set it to multiple because I'm going to show you how this works in a bit. Then we set up our ingress. So I'm enabling this as an external container app, um, which means it will accept HTTP traffic. Its target port uh, will be um, uh, port 80. I'm enforcing HTTPS on my container app by setting the allow insecure uh, to false. And then for the traffic. So this is used to direct traffic between different revisions within our container app. So here I've got two revisions. So um, essentially what I'm doing here is we'll have two active revisions and we'll split the traffic 50-50. So the latest revision um, will receive 50% and the old revision uh, will receive uh, another 50%. Coming down here, we can also define which registries our container app's going to be using. So the container Azure Container Registry that I defined earlier uh, we're going to be um, connect, uh, connecting our container app to that container registry. Um, so we're defining the server, the name of the container registry, uh, the username, so that using the login server uh, for our username, and then we've got a password secret ref. So here I've got the name of the secret. And further, oh, just below here, we can set up our secrets. Now I've only got one secret so far. So again, the secret container registry password and the value will be the first password um, for our container registry. Um, but here we can define secrets for uh, databases, uh, container names, key vault, uh, URIs, etc. And then down here um, is uh, our template. And within our template, we define um, our containers. So which container image we're going to be using. Here I'm just using a simple um, that's the wrong one. I'll go back to NGX. I'm using a simple NGX um, container image. And then I'm also defining some resources as well. So defining how much CPU I want to give it and also some memory as well. Um, as you can see, this takes an array of containers. So we can have multiple containers within a container app. Say if we're running a sidecar, we could specify another container that acts as our sidecar. And here I'm also defining some scale rules as well. So setting the minimum number of replicas uh, which can be scaled down to zero and the maximum number of replicas. Um, so in um, scenarios where we're having uh, a high number of events coming into our container app, we could set this at a much higher level. The maximum is 10. And so it will essentially scale up to 10 replicas um, to if it needs to process, if it needs 10 replicas to process all those events. And this is a very basic uh, example, a very basic bicep template for our container app. Um, obviously, we can do a lot more, and in future videos, um, I'll be exploring um, the other things that we can configure in our bicep template, um, just to show you how extensible we can make our container apps. So now what I'm going to do is go into the Azure portal, 
and I've gone ahead and provisioned our resources ahead of time. But here, I'll just zoom in a little bit here. So here I've got my container registry, I've got my container apps environment as well, and also a container app and my log analytics workspace. So if I go into my container apps environment, there's not a lot that we can actually uh, view here, but here we've got a static IP address for that container apps environment. Remember, it's an external one. And, and we've also got the number of container apps. So if I just click onto that, I can just see my container app there in my container app environment. So if I click on that container app, here we've got a variety of different things that we can um, explore. But here, since this is an external um, container app, I've enabled Ingress on to this uh, container app, so I can click on that. This would be the fully qualified domain name, and here I'm just using the base NGX image um, for this website. Here I've got the container apps environment that this container app has been provisioned to. I've also got my log analytics workspace as well. And from the portal, we can do some basic monitoring here. In future videos, we'll go into a little bit more depth on how we can actually monitor our container app um, applications. Here we can view the secrets of our container app as well. Give this a chance to load, and we should see there's my container registry password. I'll be destroying this environment later, so that's not going to really do much for you. Uh, but we can also set uh, via our ingress settings as well. Give this a bit of a chance to load. So here I've enabled HTTP ingress. I can disable this if I want to. I can limit ingress traffic to my container apps environment. I can limit it to um, a VNet um, as long as I've uh, set the internal only to true in the container apps environment. And we can also accept traffic from anywhere as well. I've also got the target port that I defined earlier in my BICEP template. Now, coming into revision management, like I said, every time we make changes to our um, to our container app, that's a revision scope change, it will generate a new revision for us. So here you can see I've got two revisions uh, and traffic is split 50-50. So this latest one is just the NGX um, um, base image, but I've also um, provisioned another image as well. So what I can do is try and refresh that until the old image comes up. Might take too long, so what I can do, we can actually split traffic between these two revisions. So I can set that to 10 and set that to 90. Um, that's got to add up to 100%, obviously. And you can see that the prior revision has, um, it's redirected traffic to the prior revi revision, which is just kind of this hello world for Azure Container Apps image. If I go into containers, here I can see which revision is being used and which container is being used um, for this current container app. We can see the resource allocation and the container uh, details. And I can also uh, modify the scaling rules as well here um, within my container app. And there's also a bunch of things that we can do that we'll explore in future videos uh, in regards to monitoring. So we can view some metrics, use some logs, uh, view the live log stream as well, actually connect into our containers console. We've also got some advisor recommendations as well, which is pretty cool. Thanks for joining me. Hopefully you enjoyed it and learned something about Azure Container Apps, what we can use it for, and the basic concepts that make up Azure Container Apps. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or reach out to me on my Twitter. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.